Hello, I'm Seema and welcome to part 9 of the chapter Redox Reactions. I'm going to make a brief video now to explain a solved example that has been given in your textbook. But before I come to that, let me just remind you that in part 8, I was telling you about the fractional oxidation numbers and the reason for fractional oxidation numbers. And while I was explaining that, I also told you about the mixed oxides and how we get fractional oxidation numbers for the metallic atom even in a mixed oxide. A mixed oxide is basically uh, the oxide of a metal which may be present in two different oxidation states. Therefore, there are, they are actually two different oxides which are present together, which are usually present together because when you prepare them or when you extract them, you usually find them together in the same ratio. Therefore, for the sake of simplicity, these oxides are named or uh, a common formula is given to them. The examples of these are Pb3O4, Fe3O4, Mn3O4 are all examples of such mixed oxides. So I told you that actually the oxidation number of the metallic atom in these mixed oxides is different for the different oxide. But since we take an average of the entire formula, we get a fractional oxidation number for the metal in the case of mixed oxides. And in this we had studied one example that was Pb3O4. So this question is based on that mixed oxide. It says why do the following reactions proceed differently? Pb3O4 is a mixed oxide. So he says when Pb3O4 reacts with hydrochloric acid, it results in the formation of PbCl2, Cl2 and 4H2O. But when Pb3O4 reacts with HNO3, it results in the formation of PbNO3, PbO2 and H2O. So we find that these two reactions, although both Pb3 PB3O4, both of them are reacting with acids, yet we do not see a common behavior in the reaction. And what is the reason for that, he asks you. So let us try to explain why they react differently. PB3O4, we know, is a mixture of two oxides, that is lead oxide and PbO2, PbO and PbO2. And in one PB3O4, that normal ratio, you have two atoms, or sorry, two molecules of PbO and one molecule of PbO2. That is how normally it would be present, or one unit, I must say, because that's a metal and a non-metal, so it could be ionic in nature too. So now these oxides, they are present in this certain ratio. So for every one Pb3O4, there are two PbOs and one PbO2. If you look at the oxidation state of lead in both of these, in PbO, oxygen always has, a, has an oxidation state of minus 2. So the oxidation state of lead in PbO will be plus 2 because it is neutralizing the oxygen and oxygen has a charge of minus 2, therefore lead obviously has a charge of plus 2. But in PbO2, you have two oxygens, which means there are two negative charges with each oxygen, so a total of four negative charges, which are being neutralized by the lead. Therefore, the charge on lead should be plus 4. So we find that the oxidation state of lead in PbO is plus 2 and in PbO2 it is plus 4. Now before we come to the equations, what do we understand from this? PbO is a metallic oxide and metallic oxides are basic in nature. So this is a basic oxide, right? Now PbO2, in this case if you see, Lead is present in two different oxidation states, plus 2 and plus 4. If plus 4 changes to plus 2 in the presence of an acid, what is it undergoing? It is undergoing reduction. So it, there is a possibility for lead, which is in the plus 4 oxidation state, to get reduced, which means that PbO2 would act as an oxidizing agent. It would act as an oxidizing agent or an oxidant. Right? So we say PbO is a basic oxide and PbO2 is an oxidant. Understood this much? So it is just this difference which is responsible for the difference in the behaviors with these two acids. And there is a difference between these two acids also. HNO3 
is also an oxidizing acid. It itself, nitric acid itself is oxidizing in nature or it gets reduced. Therefore, we find due to the difference between the properties of the acids also, there is a, uh, there is a difference in the way PBO3 O4 reacts in these two, with these two acids. So let us take the first example. With HCl, PB3O4 results in the formation of PBCl2, Cl2 and 4H2O. So let us split this reaction. PB3O4 is made up of PBO and PBO2. So how do they react? The PBO, twice PBO, reacts with 4HCl and results in the formation of PBCl2 plus H2O. When an acid reacts with a base, it results in the formation of a salt and water. This reaction is known as a neutralization reaction, an acid-base neutralization reaction. So since PBO is a basic oxide, it reacts with the acid HCl in an acid-base neutralization reaction, results in the formation of a salt that is PBCl2 and water is formed. On the other hand, PBO2 that is present, this PBO2 is not uh, is oxidizing in nature and when it reacts with hcl it is not it is not acting as a basic oxide now but it is an oxidizing in nature so when it reacts with hcl it results in a redox reaction and not in an acid base uh, neutralization reaction so what happens in this it results in the formation of a salt that is pbcl2 cl2 is formed and h2o is formed now, if we carefully look at the oxidation states, lead was in the plus 4 oxidation state and in the product, lead comes down to plus 2, which means that the oxidation state has decreased from 4 to 2, so lead is reduced. And anything whose oxidation state goes up is getting oxidized. So in he here, in hydrochloric acid, chlorine had a charge of minus 1. And in PBCl2 also chlorine has a charge of minus 1. So two of these chlorines do not get oxidized or reduced, but two of them are getting converted into Cl2 molecule where the oxidation state of chlorine is 0. So chlorine is changing from minus 1 to 0. Therefore, two atoms of chlorine are getting, are getting oxidized and PBO2, the lead here, is getting reduced. So those two electrons which are... Uh, from a plus 4 charge to a plus 2 charge, it means that two electrons have been added to it. Those two electrons have been given by these two chlorines which have got neutralized. There were four negative charges with chlorine because there were four chlorine ions, chloride ions. So two of these electrons were provided by chlorine which got neutralized and therefore formed Cl2 or it got, it got oxidized by the loss of electrons. So the second reaction is a redox reaction. Now let us come to the second example that is given where PB3O4 reacts with nitric acid and results in the formation of lead nitrate and PBO2 which is actually one of the components of the reactants itself. Which means that PBO2 never reacted and in the product or in the reaction mixture in the end you find PBO2 is left which means that it never reacted. So how do we explain that? As I told you, that PBO2 is oxidizing in nature. It, is an, it itself is oxidizing or it gets reduced, while nitric acid also is oxidizing in nature. A redox reaction can only occur when one of the substances is oxidizing and the other is reducing. Here, chlorine, the chloride ion was getting, was getting oxidized. And here, for PBO2, to to convert, to convert the nitric acid or to oxidize nitric acid, nitric acid itself must get oxidized while lead gets reduced and this does not happen because for lead to get reduced, the other substance should get oxidized. But HNO3 itself is reduced, is reduced and does not uh, oxidize or uh, uh, rather it does not get oxidized. And therefore, both of these are oxidants and therefore they cannot show that reaction. That is PBO2, I'm not talking of PBO. But PBO is a basic oxide and HNO3 is an acid. So these two will react 
in an acid base reaction or a neutralization reaction and whenever an acid reacts with a base it results in the formation of salt and water and that's what you get so when lead oxide combines with HNO3 it results in the formation of PBNO3 which is the salt of lead and water is produced which is a neutralization reaction so we find that HNO3 uh, reacts with PBO in an acid base reaction and neutralizes the uh, basic oxide into lead nitrate and water is formed while HNO3 does not react with the oxidant PBO2 because it itself is oxidizing in nature. It itself has a tendency to get reduced and therefore this reaction does not take place and when you look at the reaction you find that it is present in the product also which means that the reactant never reacted. So this was, I felt, was a question which was really important for you to understand how we have mixed oxides, how we have these fractional oxidation numbers, and why in a mixed oxide you may have reactions which may be different. So, and this reaction itself, you can explain only if you knew that PB3O4 was not a single compound, it was actually a mixture of compounds, and uh, those compounds had different properties. Now, in the next video, I'll be starting the balancing of chemical equations, or uh, rather redox reactions. So, with this, I'll wind up today's video. If you found it helpful, give it a thumbs up subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. You know when you give a thumbs up uh, it goes into the YouTube algorithm and it helps them also to know what to suggest to you and it helps me too. So please do give a like if you like the video and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye bye for now.